This video lecture contains definitions of major themes and techniques that contributed to the development of early American dance. It should be understood that for this course, technique is almost synonymous with tradition. Technique is the means of passing on codified and established forms. As Lesson 1 stated, there are conservative techniques that adhere closely to established traditions, and there are fusions of techniques, blending aspects from different cultures, societies, and ideals associated with each. In that sense, Americans wanted to create something new, to influence and inspire the world. American colonialists and pioneers were already geographically and politically separate from Europe, but could they reflect their separateness within culture? Why repeat the artistic forms that could only remind them of where they came from? The social environment of the early colonies did not lend itself well to the development of formal, sophisticated artistic entertainment. Ballet to Americans was utterly foreign. During the Romantic era, it presented a never-never land of fairies, danced by scantily clad women, along with stories about princes, princesses, and royal courts. Moreover, the stigmas attached to theatrical dancing and dancers remained in the minds of the American public long after Puritanism had ceased to be a religious force. John Martin, an early critic and historian of dance, considered that Puritanism, in both its theological and social senses, promoted the ideals of the American Republic, anti-authoritarianism, individualism, simplicity, and functionalism. In other words, Puritanism stressed that the American theater should not model itself on the decadent authoritarianism of European culture, which America had rejected in favor of egalitarianism and the rights of the individual. American dance also went against established codes of ballet and other European forms in favor of the development of individualistic dance metaphors. It should reflect the qualities of early colonial life in America of nothing luxurious or indulgent and should be stripped down to the barest dance movements, costumes, and settings. Furthermore, American theatrical forms should be functional for the American character. It should reflect the American experience and the character of its culture. In both Europe and America, a movement against formalism in all the arts was taking place. The central concern was to look for real or true expressions as opposed to creating artifices. This entailed a shift away from formalism in favor of anti-formalist aesthetics. In Europe, this could be seen in the Art Nouveau movement. In America, traditional attitudes towards the body were being broken down by a new respect for health and physical culture. With urbanization and industrialization, women's roles had changed. The process of breaking down traditional attitudes towards the body was given impetus through the feminist reformists' concern with health and hygiene and the influence of Del Sartism. Del Sartism was developed by Francois Del Sart and mainstreamed in America by Steele McKay and Genevieve Stebbins. Del Sartre developed his system of expression based on his observations and cataloging of gestures and attitudes. He developed this into new principles of movement that were based also on relaxation, easy balance, and natural flow of breath. Del Sartism worked its way into American culture through three stages. The first was with training for actors. That influence can then be seen in Hollywood's silent movies the melodrama, or basically Del Sartian gestures. The second stage was working its way into the middle class, particularly middle class women. The middle class, a largely Protestant population, was able to overlook the moral stigma of the dancing body through Del Sartre's connection of the Christian trinity to his exercises. The third stage, developed by Genevieve Stebbins, became much more about a high art and spiritual performance. Genevieve Stebbins aided the popularization of the Del Sart system into the arena of physical culture and dance through promoting extensive lecturing, writing, and performing. Her performance consisted of pantomime 
and statue posing that were interpretations of poems. Ruth St. Dennis followed Delsart's example by creating oriental dances that were the right blend of sensuality and spirituality. She joined forces with Ted Sean and started a small dance company. The company grew into the Denishon School of Dancing and Related Arts in Los Angeles. The school offered a uniquely varied curriculum with ballet, Spanish, Oriental, Egyptian, Greek, American Indian, Geisha, Creative, Del Sartre, Primitive, and Folk Dances. The Denishon graduates toured the country performing everything from dance myths to the latest ballroom steps and appeared in early silent movies and in the Ziegfeld Follies in New York. The school also trained silent movie actors to move expressively for directors like D.W. Griffith and Cecil B. DeMille and staged colossal costume spectacles. Some of the most influential and significant graduates from the Denishon School are Martha Graham, Doris Humphrey, and Charles Weidman. Defining modern dance, or modernism, according to Clement Greenberg, an art historian and critic, Modernism is to uncover the nature of the artistic medium and work in terms of its specificity. The graduates of Denishon, the new American modern dancers, Graham, Humphrey, and Weidman, sought to return to the source of the dance itself, that they should emphasize the primacy of movement over music and all other aspects of performance. Music should no longer serve as the inspiration to release the stuff of dance, nor should dance be a visual representation of the musical structures. More importantly, dance should mirror its own social environment, and that way it comes out of the life and circumstances of its immediate time and space, and therefore becomes something much more American. This is, in essence, the definition of functionalism. And with America entering World War I, a new sense of nationalism as well as isolationism made Americans and influenced the American modern dance scene to turn its back on the formalism of ballet, the and the exoticism of Denishon and Isadora Duncan. The Denishon graduates, Martha Graham, Doris Humphrey, and Charles Weidman would have a significant impact on the direction of American modern dance by creating new American dance techniques. Martha Graham would create the contraction and release technique. Humphrey's technique of fall and recovery emanated from her experiments with movement that recognized the power of gravity as a dramatic element in the dance, and that special body rhythms were created by using breath. Humphrey considered that a dancer could breathe with the various parts, or the whole, of the body, and it drew on Nietzsche's concepts of the polar opposition between the Apollonian and Dionysian drives in the human being. The first impels the individual to achieve rest, peace, stability, and balance, while the second drive leads him or her towards excitement, danger, and ecstatic abandon. These mental drives had their equivalent in states of the body, falling away from and returning to a state of equilibrium, and that the dance lies in the drama of motion between these two polarities.